Well, thanks so much for being here and for having me today. I'm excited to tell you about Phenolator, a resource that I built with significant help from Bill Baumgartner, who I believe is also on this call, during my PhD and which I continue to maintain. So the goal of today's talk is to provide probably the world's fastest overview of what a knowledge graph is, introduce the Phenolator ecosystem, and provide a quick tutorial that demonstrates some of the things that you can do with Phenolator. So let's get started with some background on knowledge graphs. I really like this figure. It was taken from OntoText, and I chose it because it provides a great overview of what a graph is and how that differs from a knowledge graph. And the primary takeaway here is that while a graph represents entities and their relationships, depicted here as shoes, colors, and celebrities, a knowledge graph provides a more expressive representation thanks to being grounded in ontologies, such that it is able to not only represent entities, but also define what it means to be an entity. And this enables many interesting properties, including the ability to infer new facts, which by definition are true. So I hope you're intrigued, because I will now introduce you to Phenolator, which is a knowledge graph. So Phenolator stands for Phenotype Knowledge Translator, which was designed to address unsolved challenges to constructing open source knowledge graphs. It's an ecosystem of tools that was written in Python to support the construction of large scale, heterogeneous, fair, semantic biological knowledge graphs that are ground in open biomedical foundry ontologies. And while OMOP also uses ontologies like SNOMED, the OVO ontologies were specifically designed to define and model different biological domains. And Phenolator is it's also a resource to obtain pre-built knowledge graph benchmarks. So to provide people who don't necessarily want to build their own knowledge graph, but want to use one, the opportunity to have that resource, or to support ongoing development of things like graph representational learning algorithms and other graph-based tools. And then finally, in addition to being a benchmark and an ecosystem of tools, we also have a Zenodo community, and I'll provide a link to this on the last slide if you're curious, that provides access to preprints, presentations, tutorials, and other recorded talks on the ecosystem. All right, back to Phenolator. So this figure, later, this figure provides a high-level overview of the Phenolator ecosystem. Briefly, the ecosystem provides tools in the form of APIs to download a variety of data. To automate the processing of different data types, we take advantage of existing tools and supplement them with things like universal file parsers, which enable the automation of data cleaning and identifier mapping. Edge list construction and ontology merging are vital steps to building a knowledge graph, and we do these things by taking advantage of other existing resources like the OWL API. But we also keep these steps separate and include other tools like bioregistry to ensure identifiers are both standardized and resolvable. And by keeping the processes of building the edge list and merging the ontologies separate from building the knowledge graph, it allows users to build multiple types of graphs from the same type of underlying data. The selection of hyperparameters is where we've introduced novel features not available in other methods, which includes things like providing alternative knowledge models, control over the way you model relations, and providing algorithms that transform graphs to support different kinds of downstream learning. And our build process is completely reproducible, includes extensive logging with summary statistics, production of quality assessment reports, and outputs knowledge graphs in a variety of different formats, like flat text files and RDF XML. And each month we provide different knowledge graphs, graph benchmarks, which we use to populate different endpoints. So very quick, dirty high level overview of the ecosystem. So using one of these benchmarks, I'll give you a bit more information and do a tutorial for our use case. So um, our use case is really focused on what can the phenolator benchmark or knowledge graph tell us about a drug and an outcome. And specifically the benchmark we'll use looks at mechanisms of human disease. And this graph has about 780,000 nodes and just over 5 million edges. And we get from the OMOP concepts and, and vocabularies into the open biomedical ontology terms by using OMOP to OVO. And so the two things we'll look at today, and I'll provide a link to this if you want to try running it yourself through a self-contained Jupyter notebook, is we make this assumption that we hope that knowledge of underlying molecular mechanisms for human disease could give us some insight into adverse events and if we can make broader connections between and identify patterns among them maybe we can learn something that could help us prevent these things 
And so we'll look at two different types of use cases quickly. Does the knowledge graph contain information on a known adverse event? And what does the knowledge graph know about a drug that's not known to cause an outcome? So I'm going to exit this. And can you guys see this notebook OK? Yes, we okay. can, yes. So in the, I'll show you on the very last slide, there's a link for instructions on how to get this and run it yourself. But it is a standalone notebook, so you can do this on your own if you're interested. And it provides different code chunks to set up the environment for you. So it'll download all the needed libraries you need and then enable you to start getting into the knowledge graph and investigating things. So we'll look at a few different things in this graph. We'll first look at, sorry, let me get down to the interesting stuff. We'll first look at node level information about lisinopril and myocardial infarction. And then we'll look at different paths that might exist between lisinopril and myocardial infarction, so things that we are known to be connected, and then lisinopril and contact dermatitis, things that are not known to have a relationship. And so again, this, this notebook is designed to obtain data for you from a populated Google Cloud storage bucket that we maintain for Phenolator. And it will also download metadata on these entities, so things like labels, descriptions, and synonyms. And when we talk about looking at node level, this notebook is very simple because it's just meant to give you a, a taste of what you can do, but we'll look at what's the ancestry of these nodes? What do we know about their neighborhoods? Is there anything interesting there? So things that the node points to one hop away. And then we'll look at shortest paths because in the literature, when when you do a systems pharmacology based analyses of these kinds of things, the, the foundation that everyone builds on our shortest path because it's supposed to be hinting at some sort of proxy of underlying molecular mechanism. So you'll have extra code chunks here to explore all of them, but I'll just show you some of the more interesting ones. So the notebook will tell you things about myocardial infarction. In this case, this node is has a degree of 399. In this case, it means it has 395 things that are pointing at it in the graph, and it points to four things. When we look at its ancestors, we can visualize what's above it. So we can see that myocardial infarction in this knowledge graph is both a myocardial disorder and a coronary artery disease, which are part of the musculoskeletal system. And as you can see, breaks this down into the further different anatomical systems that it's part of. If you want more information about it, you can print different levels of the hierarchy to see, well, above it, it's two parents are myocardial disorder and coronary artery disease. Well, how many other things are occurring at that level? So you can get other counts of things that are with it. When we look at its neighborhood, again, it has 399 neighbors, but we'll only look at the things that it points to. We see that myocardial infarction has a disease feature of myocardial necrosis. It's subclass of coronary artery disease and myocardial disorder, like we confirmed in the ancestry, and it has a location which is the heart. So all things you would expect to see. If we skip down to looking at paths, so we want to ask questions about well, what's the shortest path between lisinopril and myocardial infarction, we can see that the knowledge graph supports one shortest path length. So there will be many paths between these two entities, but one shortest directed path. And if you want to see what that looks like, we see that the shortest path to connect these two entities is that lisinopril is causally related to myocardial infarction. Uh, what I'm not showing you here because we don't have enough time is there are metadata and evidence dictionaries that accompany the graph that can explain to you well, what does causally related mean and how do we know that? So it'll provide things like PubMed IDs and additional context that can help support that relation. But what if we look at something where we know that there is no direct relationship between these things? In this case, lisinopril and contact dermatitis. So in this case, the knowledge graph tells us that the shortest path is length four and that there are 14 paths of length four. And if we look at what these paths look like, You'll see things like lisinopril is causally related to idiopathic apoptotic anemia, which has a phenotype of low vitamin E, and low vitamin E is causally related to contact dermatitis. So you can see that there are other edges or other paths to connect these two things, but not as strong as the evidence that we saw for myocardial infarction and lisinopril, and different kinds of ways that you might want to understand possible connections molecularly between these things. So this 
This notebook will be available if you want to give it a try yourself. Along with the slides, more information on FINA later as promised to the Zenodo community. Then we have an open endpoint where if you know Sparkle, you can go ahead and play around with some queries to explore it yourself. And that's it.